Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Before we start reading, if you can, please stand up. Verse 5 onwards. Now I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia. Verse 6, please. We even spent a minute with you that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. Verse 7. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you if Lord permits. I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. Verse 9. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. I, I think that's enough. Uh, let's uh, look unto the Lord for his help. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I thank you, Lord, this wonderful time you have given to all of us. And thank you, Lord, for helping us to understand we were under condemnation, under the law, but you delivered us, Lord, through your gospel. I thank you. I praise you, Lord, for the deliverance because of which we are able to stand here. And Lord, I thank you. I praise you. Lord, as we are going to meditate this scripture portion, Lord, you feed us in the way we can able to digest and understand and get strength out of it and apply in our lives as we leave from this place and go into the world. Lord, I'm an unworthy vessel. I don't deserve to stand in front of your people. Lord, you hide me. Lord, you anoint me with your spirit. Give me the words that I needed to speak. You speak to me and speak through me. Lord, bind each and every power of darkness in the name of Jesus. I offer this prayer in the most, in the, in Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. So I was actually um, meditating on the next verse after after verse seven last week, and I was planning to skip this uh, eight and nine and move on to verse ten, but it was. Verse 9, which caught my attention. Verse 9 actually caught my attention. Verse 9, it's uh, beautiful. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. What, what is Paul talking about here? What he is saying is, there are many adversaries, and the great and effective door has opened to me. There are two contradictions, right? So I would like to focus today what he means by great and effective door and what are those adversaries and how he could be able to say even though he has many adversaries there, he could be able to say with confidence great and effective door has opened. And we will also see what it means by open door when Bible talks about. And also we will compare with Revelation 3.7. I have opened the door that no one can shut. And we will also see the particular scenarios in Ephesus, what Paul was going through, and how God worked in a wonderful way there. And God willingly, we will cover all that. Um, please... Uh, Please turn with me to Acts chapter 18, verse 1. I would like to give a little bit background. And also, this is the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Please bear with me if I ask questions. At least uh, I expect one or two answers from the congregation. Which missionary journey... Paul is writing this letter. 
And how many missionary journeys total? Paul participated. And which missionary journey he is writing this letter? And where he is writing this letter? Remember, Bible can be remembered in multiple ways. All the letters, all the words, everything looks same. The way we remember Bible is based on the context. Where is he writing? Whom is he writing? What is the context? Why it is important to us? These four questions should always reflect while we are meditating on the Bible. Otherwise, many times we go out of the context. Paul is writing this letter from Ephesus. And he is talking about the great and effective door has opened to me. That is, that is talking about his ministry in Ephesus. And also he is saying, I have a lot of problems here. I have many adversaries here. But God is still working very effectively. That's why he could able to say, a great opportunity for me to preach the gospel. That is what it means by, for a great and effective door has opened. If you look at Acts chapter 18, verse 1, you know, he talks about, can somebody read for me? And nine also, okay? So, Paul to, God told to Paul, preach the gospel in Corinth. That's how he preached the gospel in Corinth. And God clearly spoke to him, I have many people in this city, do not be afraid. I like this verse. When I was in Varanasi, I was so afraid of uh, uh, taking Bible out in my university campus and going to church. There are many RSS attacks. And when we plan to arrange the gospel meetings, open meetings outside the university campus, this is the verse God spoke to me. Do not be afraid. I am, I am with you. No one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. So God spoke to Paul, and he prepared, and he went to Corinth. He spent time there. And after this ministry, he spent for a while, he had to go for Ephesus. And what Paul does is, he goes there, he set up a stage, he preached the gospel, he goes to another place, and he forgets about them. Is that true? He forgets about them? No. That is why he's writing this letter. He is always, always in the work of the Lord. What does that mean by work of the Lord? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in the vain in the Lord. That is the, that is the background verse he is talking about, 58, and then coming to 16th chapter. And then he is talking about his personal plans. Right? He is actually writing the letter to encourage the Corinthians and we all see all 16 chapters, what are the issues they have, what are the wrong doctrines they have, and preaching, everything he is addressing from the Ephesus. And what is the work of the Lord? I would like to focus here. What is the work of the Lord? Work of the Lord is evangelize them, edify them, strengthen them. That is altogether work of the Lord. Luke chapter 19 verse 10 talks about the evangelism. Nasin chindani vedaki rakshin chutuk manish kumarudu vachinani atan chepen. That is what we preach. For the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That is, that is what we preach. And edification. What is the edification? Colossians chapter 1 verse 28. Can somebody read for me? I can read but if I keep on reading... We may not get a chance to see the verses. Everyone, 
ప్రతి మనుషుణ్ణి క్రీస్తునందు సంపూర్ణునిగా చేసి ఆయన ఎదుట నిలబెట్ట వలనని సమస్త విధములైన జ్ఞానంతో మేము ప్రతి మనుషునికి బుద్ధి చెప్పుచు ప్రతి మనుషునికి బోధించుచు ఆయన్ని ప్రకటించుచున్నాం ప్రతి మనుషుడికి బుద్ధి చెప్పుచు ప్రతి మనుషుడికి బోధించు ఆయనను ప్రకటించున్నాం తెలుగు ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ వెరీ క్లోజ్ టు ద హార్ట్ దట్ ఈస్ వాట్ ఎడిఫికేషన్ మీన్స్ టుగెదర్ ఎవాంజలిజం అండ్ ఎడిఫికేషన్ దట్ ఈస్ వాట్ ఫాల్స్ మినిస్ట్రీ ఈ ఎవాంజలైజ్డ్ ఫస్ట్ కొరిందియన్స్ వెన్ కొరిందియన్స్ అండ్ హీఈస్ రైటింగ్ దిస్ లెటర్ టు ఎడిఫై దెమ్ టు కరెక్ట్ దెమ్ టు షేప్ దెమ్ టు ఎంకరేజ్ దెమ్ ఇన్ ద మినిస్ట్రీ అండ్ దట్స్ వై he would like to come and see them but he even though he wants to come and see them he doesn't want to spend short time with them and he goes there i spend some time i will come back i will stay winter with you all that he said and then lord permits he is planning but he is asking if god permits why he doesn't want to leave that place ephesus right away because the great and effective door has opened for him even though his heart is here he doesn't want to leave there even though he is there he doesn't want to confine to one place he wants to take care of his people whom he evangelized that is what his focus is and that's the basis for jap- for this chapter 16 so one man of god said for a mayor his own city is important for a governor his own state is important for a president his own country is important for a preacher the whole world is important for preacher there is no boundaries for preacher there is no boundaries we can pray for the whole world we can pray for everybody that is what jesus said go into the world not into the san francisco city or specific place that is what paul vision is he is actually going to the places where nobody has reached many times the holy spirit restricted him not to go there will god willingly we will cover that topic and then i would like to focus a little bit on the reference door uh, reference to open doors please turn with me to acts chapter 14 verse 27 Acts chapter 14 verse 27 Now when they had come and gathered the church together they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the gentiles We know God appointed Paul to gentiles and how the Acts chapter 14 verse 27 he is giving a report how God has opened the door to the gentiles and he at the end of the report that's verse 27 says now when they had come and gathered the church together they reported all that that's that's what important they reported all that god has done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the gentiles in other words an opportunity to preach the gospel to the gentiles an opportunity to preach the gospel to gentiles and second corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 furthermore when i come to us to preach Christ's gospel a door and a door was opened to me by the lord it's another it's another scenario paul is talking about how god actually opened the door for him was actually in telugu christ suvartha prakatinchutaku nenu troyaku vachinappudu prabhu nandu naaku manchi samayam praaptinchi undaga sahodaraina teethu naaku kanapadnandana so what is actually important here is god is the one who opened the doors for paul and he utilized them and another instance colossians chapter 4 verse 3 can somebody read this is all introduction by the way colossians chapter 4 verse 3 
మరియు నేను బంధకంలో ఉంచబడేటకు కారణమైన క్రీస్తు మరణం గురించి నేను బోధించవలసిన విధంగానే నాకు మంచి సమయం ప్రాప్తించి ఉన్నది వెరీ బ్యూటిఫుల్ అండ్ దీస్ ఆల్ ది ఇన్స్టెన్సెస్ ఈజ్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ ది ఆపర్చునిటీ టు గా ప్రీచ్ ద గాస్పల్ అండ్ దెర్ ఈజ్ అన్ వన్ మోర్ రిఫరెన్స్ ప్లీజ్ టర్న్ విత్ మీ టు రెవల్యూషన్స్ చాప్టర్ త్రీ వర్ సెవెన్ టు ఎయిట్ ఐఎమ్ రీడింగ్ ఇన్ ద ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఆఫ్ టైమ్ and to the angel of the church in philadelphia right these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of david he who opens and no one shuts and shuts no one opens verse 8 i know your works see i have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you for you have little strength have kept my word and have not denied my name this is this is an open door to enter into his kingdom and this is open door to enter into his kingdom for every saved believer this particular instance how many churches are good out of uh, all the churches in revelation two out of which is philadelphia is one of them and this church is faithful they kept the word and that's why i have opened the door for you no one can shut it but today our focus is on first corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 so the if you want to understand what actually paul mean first corinthians chapter 16 verse 9 we need to go to acts chapter 19 please turn with me to acts chapter 19 it's a it's a very big chapter due to interest of time we don't go each and every verse we will actually spend time quite a, quite decent time in this chapter today and meditate how paul actually did his ministry and what is the reason he could able to say great and effective door has opened to me so we know that acts chapter 19 can somebody read verse 1 and 2 is interaction with the these are by the way these are jewish people they are in the process of conversion they have uh, they have understood the gospel but they didn't understand the real gospel of jesus christ and he is asking them very specific question did you receive the holy spirit he didn't ask are you born again so this topic is very interesting we don't have time to dwell there with that uh, context but how he interacted with unknown people even to begin with did you receive the holy spirit they are very honest we never heard about it and then if you look at the verse was five when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus originally they were baptized in uh, john's baptism and now after he heard the gospel from paul they actually baptized in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ and then when paul actually put hands they got received the holy spirit and how many people are they 12 men what's actually what seven says now the men were about 12 in all 
12 of them, he, that's the first thing he actually started in Ephesus. And then what actually happens? Every good thing you do in ministry, Saturn always ready. So in verse 9, if you actually look at it, but when some were, some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way before multitude, he departed from men, withdrew to the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tarnas. When he did his ministry, there was 12 people saved and they baptized, and right away there is an opposition. That opposition is, you know, Telugu, it's really good. Aite kondar katina parchbadi, varai oppukonuka, janasahum samuham yeduta, i margamnu dushin chu nanduna, atadu vari ni vidici shishulan pretek parchkoni, preti dinamu, turannu anu waka parts, wakani parts allo, tarkin chu ochen. Preti dinam. How long did he do there? The verse, next verse 10 says. And this he continued for two years. So that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Both Jews and Greeks. He spent two years plus. He stayed beyond that also. He spent two years until everybody hears the gospel. How beautiful that is. He was not rushed to go there and preach and somebody didn't agree or didn't give him the importance. He left that place and moved on something. No, he didn't do that. When there is opposition, he moved right next to that place. Whatever the, whatever the synagogue he used to preach, there is a school right next to him. And there he used to spend two years and preaching the gospel so that everybody in that, in that uh, place heard the gospel. And verse 11 talks about, Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Unusual miracles. The point I want to make here is, when we want to preach the gospel, or when we want to do the ministry, there is always opposition. It is up to us to see the opposition or the works of the hand of God are God's work. Even when Jesus Christ on the earth was doing the ministry, there was a, there was a great opposition from the so-called uh, leaders. His own people, his own host did not believe, but still he came to do the will of God and he fulfilled the will of God. God willingly, we will focus a little bit in, on the reflection at the end. But God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Verse 12, please, somebody. Thank you, brother. Verse 12 in Telugu, Atana Seriram Naku Tagilan, Cheti Gudla Nainanu, Nadikat Lainanu, Rogulia the Techinapudu, Rogamul Vari Vidici, no, Dayamul Koda Vadilipoino. He didn't come, only his, uh, his, uh, his clothes. When they touched, you know, they fleed, they relieved from the diseases, even from evil spirits. That is how God worked in that place. I don't have time to go each and every detail. But what is the, what is the, who is, who is actually confirming that he did a great and effective ministry from Ephesus? God. And also, devils. Verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? Paul did ministry, even devils confirmed that ministry. I know Paul, I know Jesus, who are you? 
అందుకు ఆ దయ్యం నేను ఏసును గుర్తు ఎరుగుతును పౌలును కూడా ఎరుగుతును కానీ నువ్వెవరు అని అడగగా ఆ దయ్యం పట్టిన వాడు ఎగిరి వారి మీద పడి వారిలో ఇద్దరిని లొంగ తీసి గెలిచను అందుచేత వారు దిగంబరులై గాయం తగిలి ఆ ఇంట నుండి పారిపోయి వాట్ హ్యాపెండ్ ఇఫ్ దిస్ హ్యాపెన్స్ ఇన్ ద ఎనీ ప్లేస్ ఈ సంగతి ఎఫ్ఎస్లో కాపురం ఉన్న సమస్తమైన యూదులకును గ్రీసు దేశస్థులకు తెలియవచ్చినప్పుడు వారందరికీ భయం కలిగిన గనక ప్రభు అయిన యేసు నామం గనపరచబడింది వెన్ గాడ్ డస్ మెరాకిల్స్ ఇన్ ఎనీ ప్లేస్ ద రీజన్ హీ డస్ మెరాకిల్స్ ఈజ్ టు గ్లోరిఫై హిజ్ నేమ్ not glorifying fall or others and it is in actually in series verse 17 this became known to both to all jews and greeks dwelling in ephesus and the fear fell on them all and the name of the lord jesus was magnified first fear and then the name of the god lord jesus was magnified it is so wonderful to see this one man's commitment and how god actually worked in that place and then if you actually keep on reading many people who actually practice this uh, magic they get their books in the public places they put all those books and they burned them verse 19 also many of those who had practiced magic brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all not in secret and they counted up the value of them and it totaled 50000 pieces of silver so the word of the lord grew mightily and prevailed verse 20 when when the word of the lord is working in our hearts or not actually can be we can tell how well we are confessing our sins and not only confessing leaving them not only leaving them and we grow them grow in the lord it is a process when effective ministry is going on this is what actually happens as anna announced in the announcements sanctification of believers and that sanctification is a everyday process and this is what we see in ephesus they are not only saved they grow in in the lord jesus christ god worked very effectively and i don't have time to spend more time there uh, more more deep but uh, please move on to verse 22 verse 22 acts chapter 19 verse 22 in case if you lost the track what 22 it is so he has sent to macedonia two of those who ministered to him timothy and eristard but he himself stayed in asia for a time he is not willing to leave he sent whoever he needs to send whatever needs to take care in other places and sending the letters or whatever it may be he stayed there for a while that actually shows his commitment to ephesus was very very deep not superficial obviously you can say that when the lord is working mightily there he prefer to stay it's not like that if you actually see verse 23 24 and 25 and 26 there is a there are riots in macedonia at that time and let's read 22 to 25 alternatively 22 please of those who minister to him Timothy but he himself stayed in Asia for a time and verse 23 and about that time there arose a great commotion about about the way a certain man named Demetrius the silver with whom his silver shrines brought no small profit to the craftsmen he called them together verse 25 he called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said 
men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Verse 26, please. You see him only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia. This Paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that there are not gods which are made with hands. Now another challenge. Then that challenge is this time relating to idol. People who actually live on this... Uh, in Ephesus, we know that the Diana temple is there. It's very famous. And you can actually read about it. And there is... How... The reason you read that is to understand how strong that, uh, that place is. That is just like Varanasi or Tirupati these days. And when you read that history, you know how hard it is to go and work in those places. But Paul selected that place because that's a hub for the, all these activities, idol worship. And now he actually worked and uh, he, everybody came to know the gospel and it affected the people who live on this uh, business. And what actually happened, we know, everybody together and started a right. And one, one thing I like it, verse 26, moreover you see here that only, not only in Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul, this Paul persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which were made with hands. How effective testimony is that? Now they know the truth. Not only that statement, it's a truth, it's a fact. And they know it, and they are confessing with their own mouth, whether they believe it or not. And not only in that place, throughout that Asia, that surrounding places. That is how effectively he did the ministry. When I read this, first time when I was reading this verse back in 2005, I was, I was a bit emotional at that time. As many of you know, I am from a Hindu background, worshipping idols. And when I look at this past, basically the last part, they are not gods which were made with hands, which is true. They are not gods which were made with hands. And when I was blinded by the Saturn, I was treating them as gods, as if they were not made with hands. And confessing that for an unbeliever, or even giving that statement is a huge thing. When they come to the judgment, in case if they don't actually hear the gospel, when they come to the judgment, this actual statement can backbite them. Right? It is a statement they gave. It is an opportunity for them to understand. It is an opportunity for them to explore what this means. God has given the power to think about it and understand. If they never heard about this, it is a different story. And even Paul provoked those thoughts in the hearts of the people who are making these deals. Not only, not only the common public. And then, verse 29, if you see, Patanam bahu galibili gaundenu, mariyu varu paulu to prayanamai ochinu maasthoniya varaina, gaiyinu arkasthur kunut patukoni, dummiga nataka salalo chorabadri. And then next verse, if you see, Many people came, but they don't know why they are fighting. Verse 32. Asaba galibili gaundenu kanuka kondar ilaguna kondar alaguna kekal vesri tam enduni mittamu koodu koniro chala mandiki teliyeled. These people just led by devil. 
That's all I can say. If they don't know what they are doing, why are they first? When the rights and all these things happen, that is what Satan actually works. But when Paul heard that his people are there, he actually wanted to go, but verse, 20, verse 31 says, when Paul wanted to go into the people, the disciples would not allow him. Then some of the officials of Asia who, are, who were his friends, Paul is not a ordinary person. He is a citizen of, he is a Roman citizen and he has friends in Asia who are officials. And they told him, they were pleading him not to go inside. But this man lived a very humble life. Even he was rejected. He was staying right next to that place and preaching for two years and doing many miracles in the name of Lord. And when another, another problem comes, he is handling that problem. My people are there. I want to go. And then, if you look at the, if you look at uh, later on, the city councillor, who actually subsided this uh, all the rights. If you have these people did not say anything, he was actually talking on behalf of them, and make them calm. And then that subsided. So, so much ministry is going on here. God is working wonderfully. And then all these connections to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. A great and effective door has opened to me. There are many adversaries. These are the adversaries he is talking about. And the great and effective door is the opportunity for him to preach throughout the Asia. Not only one place. Throughout Asia, many people come to know Jesus as their personal savior. And even many of the trades got impacted. And many rights. But he, he maintained his relations with the officials. Friends. I'm not sure what kind of friends they are. It Bible did not talk about it. I always uh, afraid a preacher's close to the presidents, preachers close to the politicians, because they they take away our focus. They take away focus, and it is it is very hard to keep up with that kind of stuff. And he was there two plus years. Is, is there a home for Paul in Ephesus? No. He goes from place to place within that place and live wherever he can. And he works. He preaches. He takes care of the ministry. He takes care of the ministry in other places by writing letters. Is that easy? It is not easy. After all, we can't sleep without our own bed and pillow. Especially that's true for me. That is how we are spoiled. It is not easy. But still, a great and effective door has opened to me. So, I stay here for a while. I stay here for a while. What is the Paul's in general experiences when he, when he does this ministry, this kind of ministry? Please turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24. Yudal Chata Aidu Marlu Wakat Taku Nalwazi Dabal Tintini, Mummar Betam Lato Kata Bartani, Wakasari Ralato Kata Bartani, Mummar Wada Pagalis Rama Patani, Wakaratrim Bawul Samadrum Lagaritani, Aneka Pariyamlu Patnam Lonu, Nadulovalainu, 
ఆపదల్లోనూ దొంగల వలనైన ఆపదల్లోనూ నా స్వజనుల వలనైన ఆపదల్లోనూ అన్ని జనుల వలనైన ఆపదల్లోనూ పట్టణంలోనూ ఆపదల్లోనూ అరణ్యంలోనూ అరణ్య అరణ్యంలో ఆపదల్లోనూ సముద్రంలో ఆపదలోనూ కపట సహోదరుల వాళ్ళని ఆపదంలోనూ ఉంటిని ప్రయాసతోనూ కష్టంతోనూ దిస్ ఇస్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ప్రయాసతోనూ కష్టంతోనూ తరచుగా జాగరణలతోనూ ఆకలి దప్పులతోనూ తరచుగా ఉపవాసములతోనూ చలితోనూ దిగంబరత్వంతోనూ ఉంటిని ఇంకనూ చెప్పవలసినవి అనేకములు ఉన్నాయి ఈఈస్ డూయింగ్ ఈఈస్ గోయింగ్ త్రూ ఆల్ దీస్ all the situations throughout his ministry in summary paul ministry is not bed of roses he was beaten many times many times the shipwreck and many times he didn't have food to eat the transportation those days is not easy he has to when god said when holy spirit hindered hindered him to not to move forward he actually has to travel west 200 miles god willing we will touch that 200 miles how with a regular normal transportation bible did not talk about it but definitely not aeroplanes or any diesel engine vehicles this is the experience but he would like to stay for a while because great and effective door has opened to me the many adversaries but i still i want to stay there on top of it all this is going through but he has one more problem verse 28 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 28 this is my favorite ivanni yu kaaka sangamulu annitini koorchina chinta kaladu ee baaramu dina dinamunu naaku kaluguchunnadi beside the other things what comes upon me daily my deep concern for all the churches my deep concern for all the churches he established he is praying he is praying for them daily and writing them letters and dealing with the present situation can we say even 1% of this i can't say not only that he wants to go to every place where the gospel was not taken but many times the holy spirit has to you know forbid in him acts chapter 16 verse 6 when they had gone through phrygia and region of galatia they were forbidden by the holy spirit to preach the word in asia and verse 7 after they had come to mysia they tried to go into bithnia but the spirit of god, but the spirit did not permit them antata varu verse 8 antata varu musiyanu daati poi troyaku vachari then god actually appeared them in a vision and said to him go to go to a certain place he wanted to go to the places but god has to restrict him certain places and allow him to go to specific place wherever the god actually opened him the great and effective door he was actually confirmed to go to places it's not that he wants to go certain places he wants to go everywhere but god actually allowed certain doors to open what it means for us today when we pray god actually opens the doors or if we have a zeal to go to places to give gospel tracts god opens the door in certain places when you pray and go god opens the doors that where we can have a fruits what it means by closing is even you do the ministry there it may not be a profitable for us it may not be bringing god's name glorified there that is what meant by closed doors are not giving an opportunity for us to give the gospel paul knows where the doors open and where the doors closed and where the doors open he spends lot of time there and then he also says preach the word to timothy be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching this is what we need to do preach the word with 
be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? Yendu kanaga general hitha bodhan sahim paka duradhe chavudil galavare tan swakiya durasil kanukulam ena bodhan thamakar pogi. Especially in this country, I have been thinking past one week a lot about my children. Why? Because so many, so many things, and people start coming to stopped coming to churches and doing their own things on Sundays. Even the believers slowly. And where this nation is going to be? And we are in the middle of all these situations, and what this next generation is going to be. And some reason I'm thinking about this a lot. And our job today is. We may not go like Paul, but wherever God kept us, we have to be faithful and at least, at least pass on to the next generation within our own home. At least then whatever we are believing will be carried on to the next generation and they will take that responsibility. Again, the, when we are preaching gospel, it is not easy I would like to read one verse from Nehemiah, chapter 4, verse 17. Those who, build, those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other held a weapon. Today, we need to do work with one hand and hold the weapon with the other hand. For us, the weapon is a prayer. When we are actually working, we have a lot of adversaries today also. Our adversaries will be relieved, our open door for us is by weapon. That weapon for us is the, is the prayer. Nehemiah, he hold the weapon with one hand and he build the wall with one hand and he could successfully able to build it. Otherwise, there are a lot of adversaries there also. They are coming and interfering, not not allowing them to build, but they could be able to do it. The reason God kept this example is to follow. And we need to hold the weapon with one hand. And not only that, Paul is actually praying for everyone day and night. Day and night. Therefore, the brethren, in all our affliction and distress, we are comforted concerning, by, concerning you by your faith. How he is getting comfort is by listening to others who are doing very well in the faith. For now, we leave if you stand fast in the Lord. Memu mi mukam cuci, mi viswasam lalu na lopam nu tirchnatlu anugrahin cumani. Ratrim bawalu atya dekamga dewun ni wedi kono chundaga. Mana dewun ni yadu tam mimun bati mian pondu chuna yaabat tu ananda muni mitamu. Dewun ni ketagi natiga krotagna tasto tuli alagu chellem pagalam. He is praying day and night for the believers. He is holding that weapon for himself and also for the believers or for the people whom he preached the gospel already. He is holding that prayer. And the same thing we are supposed to do that today. Many times we actually look for the comforts. And when I was preparing for this message, God was reminding me my, my unbelief. Um, I would like to confess that um, when I went to India in January, so, uh, before even I, I go from here, um, as soon as they know, they asked for Sunday message. And then I was praying, God said, take this. And I was preparing for that message. And all this uh, day and night difference, and a lot of travel, I'm not sure whether I can able to do that. And when I start from China, I spoke to Prashanti, I said, I may not able to take it. It's, uh, I, I'm, I didn't have sleep last few nights 
and by the time I go, I don't know how the situation is. And, but I feel that that is, God very clearly spoke to me, take this, when I prayed for that. And I was waiting. By the time I reached home, it was even worse. I couldn't sleep in the uh, night flight. On top of that, they asked, okay, take the worship message also. So now I need to prepare for worship message and also take the main message. I was about to say I can't take it because I couldn't sleep. And specifically that morning, around 2.30, I got uh, jet lag, due to jet lag, I woke up and God spoke to me, do not be afraid, it is I. Do not be afraid, it is I. And with that, I went. And the whole scenario is depending on self. I cannot actually do this. Many times we fail in ministry is because of ourself. Everything we want to do by our own strength, not giving chance to God. All we need to do is just be available and submit to God and pray. And God will do wonderful things. A great and effective door has been opened for me. There are many adversaries. May God bless this verse. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I thank you, Lord. I praise you for this morning. Lord, this is for me first. Lord, many times I depend on myself, my time, my availability, my busyness, my comfort. But Lord, I forget the fact that I just need to be available to you and the rest you will take care of it. There are many open doors in front of us and an effective doors, but oftentimes we don't see that because we don't have time. Lord, you help us, Lord. We have only one life. We have only one opportunity. Whether we utilize it or lose it, you help us. Take the example of Paul as he took the example of you. As he has said, Lord, follow me as I follow Jesus. You give us that grace and help us to stand for you. Help us to work in your vineyard and so that your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.